Hey everyone, and welcome to our first in-depth look at Demon Hunters in the up-and-coming expansion Shadowlands. Love them or hate them, there's no question Demon Hunters have had a very strong kit throughout BFA. Well, now in Shadowlands, Demon Hunters have seen quite a few balance changes, including many nerfs to most of their core kit. So we got in touch with Rank 1 Demon Hunter and AWC competitor Tren to share his opinion and thoughts on how Demon Hunter is looking going forward. We'll be taking a look at races, talents, covenants, soulbinds, conduits, as well as legendaries. Oh, and this guide has been made using the current beta build, and we'll be releasing a refresher guide once Season 1 begins and things are more solidified, which will cover any outdated information within this guide along with a more in-depth look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and we'll even discuss comps. So don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and ring that bell to be notified the moment those guides are released. Without any further ado, let's jump straight into the video. And to get things started, let's take a look at how Demon Hunters have changed in Shadowlands from BFA. The biggest hit for Demon Hunters has come in the form of nerfs to three main defensive tools. First of all, and most importantly, is the removal of the dodge aspect of Blade Dance. No longer when using Blade Dance or its empowered form Death Sweep do you have 100% dodge. Blur has also seen a significant nerf, having its damage reduction reduced from 35% down to 20. And then to complete the trio, Demon Hunter's sustain via Leech has also been toned down, with a 5% nerf to soul rending while no longer granting an additional 10% while in metamorphosis, and removing the passive Leech from meta and instead combining it with soul rending. On the offensive side, Demon Hunters are also a lot weaker, thanks to the removal of a term that we use quite often on this channel, which is borrowed power. The loss of Azerite traits like Eye of Rage, Burning Soul, and of course, Gushing Wound, Drestagath Trinket, and Reaping Flames no longer being in the game means that Demon Hunter actually lacks quite a bit of damage output. As for the plus side of things, there are two strong new changes. The addition of Immolation Aura now being baseline, coupled with two very strong PvP talents, Cleansed in Flame, which is a copy of the Vengeance DH PvP talent, attaching a self-dispel to your Immolation Aura, and then Mortal Rush. This is currently the saving grace of Demon Hunters right now, which attaches a Mortal Strike healing reduction effect into Fell Rush. In regards to the playstyle of Demon Hunters, it's going to be substantially weaker. You'll have to care a lot more about the damage that you take, and also how you use your defensives. The loss of Blade Dance Dodge hurt the most here as it was an easy way to mitigate damage. As they stand right now on beta though, Demon Hunters have seen far better days, and with the loss of all these borrowed power systems, it's revealed some long-lasting core issues of the spec in general, and without tuning, they'll end up being extremely problematic. That being said though, Demon Hunters will still remain to be very strong in 2v2, thanks to Mana Rift still being in the game, as well as lower rated 3v3. The main problem will occur at higher ratings where players tend to exploit Demon Hunter's weaknesses a lot more. With the overview covered and out of the way, let's take a look at all of the information you need to get started in Shadowlands. But first, if you're enjoying the video, a sub to the channel would be phenomenal. Okay, our usual format is to cover races first of all, but as you all probably know, you don't really have much of a choice in the matter as a Demon Hunter. If you're Alliance, you go Night Elf. If you're Horde, you go Blood Elf. Sadly, Shadowlands didn't bring any more options to the table. So, we'll move swiftly on to the talents. On the first row, nothing has changed. If you want some extra sustained healing or don't need the added mobility, then Demonic Appetite is the pick. But if you're versus mages or druids or any other high mobility classes, then Fellblade gives you that extra gap closer and added damage. So mainly pick based off of matchup. Your pick on this row also affects which talent you pick on our level 25 row. If you picked up Fellblade, you automatically take Demon Blades, and if you selected Demonic Appetite, then you should go with Burning Hatred. Then for our level 30 row, the best pick is currently the newly added talent Unbound Chaos. This talent is actually insane, causing your now baseline Immolation Aura to buff your next Fell Rush, causing you to deal some very hard-hitting AoE damage. If you struggle to hit this ability or it's a matchup where you can't waste Fell Rushes, then Trail of Rain is an easier to use but weaker alternative. Dropping down to the level 35 row, there is of course only one option, Soul Rending. Despite its nerfs, Soul Rending is now even more important due to the changes to Metamorphosis no longer providing added leech. Then again, on the level 40 row, there's one clear winner. 
first blood. This reduces the fury cost of Blade Dance while additionally increasing its damage. On our penultimate row, again, not much variation. Bell Eruption for the added stun is going to be better in pretty much every single scenario. Great to kill targets, great to CC, and of course, great to secure mana rifts. And then last up on our final row, the obvious choice is Demonic, as it still heavily outshines Momentum, even despite the two second nerf to the subsequent meta. But added sustain and damage is still just too good to pass up. All right, with all of our normal talent selected, let's now take a look at our PVP talents. As mentioned, there are two very strong new additions. To start off, let's look at a good default three talents. In general though, Demon Hunter has a large array of very strong PvP talents, and knowing when to swap between them is extremely important. First up is Detainment. This is honestly too good to ever really pass up on. Transforming in Prison and increasing its duration by 2 seconds and making targets immune to damage and healing while imprisoned. This is great for many reasons. You can use it to keep targets low, use it as CC, or even secure mana rifts. Next up, you'll want Cover of Darkness. This talent again offers so many uses. Improving darkness by 50%, giving yourself and your team members a very powerful defensive tool. And then for your last default talent, we recommend picking up the newly added Mortal Rush. If your composition doesn't supply a Mortal Strike, then this is a must have. This talent alone also opens up a lot more composition variety to Demon Hunters, as most comps require a Mortal Strike effect to be viable. Alright, so now we've got a baseline, let's talk about when to swap between other strong PvP talents. Reverse Magic should be taken against casters or whenever you need an added way to get your healer out of CC. For example, Mage's Polymorph or Hunter's Freezing Trap. Swapping out either Mortal Rush or Cover of Darkness dependent on if your team brings a Mortal Strike or not. And we of course can't forget about Mana Rift. This is again very dependent on matchups. If you think it's a mana game or you're playing 2v2, then swapping in Mana Rift for either Cover of Darkness or Mortal Rush gives you the potential to win on mana in longer games. And finally, the newly added Cleanse by Flame can also be considered versus heavy damage over time cleaves, say for instance Affliction Shadow Priest. You can combine this with Reverse Magic and Detainment to heavily counter their spread pressure. Okay, so now it's time to move on to the new additions to the game added with Shadowlands, Covenants, Soulbinds, Conduits, and Legendary Items. First of all, let's begin with Covenant Choice, which for Demon Hunter is relatively simple. You're gonna go Venthyr. Venthyr offers the class ability Sinful Brand. This is the highest damage Covenant ability by far. It has very strong single target pressure, which also reduces the target's attack speed and casting speed on a one minute cooldown. This effect is also applied to every target that you hit with your Metamorphosis, which synergizes extremely well with your burst. All right, now that we've sided with the Venthyr, it's time to choose a Soulbind. Soulbinds are essentially skill trees that you progress through as you journey through Shadowlands, providing mostly passive bonuses. There are three Soulbinds available on the Venthyr, Nagia the Mistblade, General Draven, and Theotar the Mad Duke. The best of which for Demon Hunters right now is Draven. This is primarily due to its defensive passives. And the biggest of these is the Service in Stone Soulbind Talent. This reduces all damage you take below 40% HP by 10%. This tree as a whole helps combat some of Demon Hunter's survivability issues in Shadowlands. We recommend following this highlighted route to gain the maximum benefit. Now you may be noticing that some gaps are still present in the tree. Well, these are filled in with what we call conduits, and one of the main reasons for following this route. Conduits are separated into three categories, finesse, potency, and endurance. Potency focuses on damage, finesse focuses on mobility and utility, and then endurance is all about surviving and defensives. Following the selected route in our Soulbind, we get access to three endurance conduits and one potency. For our endurance conduits, you're going to want Fell Defender, Shattered Restoration, and Vicious Ink. Fell Defender reduces the cooldown of Blur, Shattered Restoration provides extra healing on Shattered Souls, and Vicious Ink reduces the magic damage you take while in meta by an additional 8%. So, this will leave our tree looking like this, having only one potency conduit left to fit in. Our recommended potency conduit is going to be Dancing with Fate. This strong conduit gives your Blade Dance a chance to proc Essence Break, which does some decent initial damage and increases the damage of your Chaos Strike and subsequent Blade Dances to the target for 8 seconds. So, that will leave our completed tree looking like this. Bear in mind, with conduits, they rank all the way up to 15. So once we get to those higher ranks, it will significantly improve the Demon Hunter's defensive ability, giving Blur a ridiculously short cooldown, making magic damage taken extremely low, and giving Shatter Souls insane healing. Alright then, last but not least, let's talk Legendaries. Legendaries are again back into the game, and this time there is a new selection and they all work in Arena. Currently you're only able to equip one at a time, and this may or may not change in the future. 
As a whole, Havoc spec specific legendaries are a bit on the weak side. The best legendary for damage right now is the Collective Anguish, which is a class specific legendary. What this does is causes your I-Beam to summon an allied Demon Hunter who also casts I-Beam. This is the best right now when it comes to pure damage. Alternatively, in those tricky matchups, Darkest Hour offers a very strong defensive option for a legendary, giving your darkness a chance to automatically proc when you fall below 35%. This can be great to play into high burst compositions looking to kill you inside of stuns. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for our first look at Demon Hunters in the up and coming expansion, Shadowlands. You should now have everything you need in order to get started the second the expansion hits. Be sure to subscribe and check back for our follow-up video, which will include any updates on the information that you saw in this guide, plus a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and even what your best compositions are. But for now, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.